are going to start putting together ideas from the last few weeks. And, and I've already mentioned this before, but we're, we're going to start getting careful and quantitative about what thermal energy is. That's a macroscopic energy. It's an energy of, of a whole bunch of atoms. Avogadro's number, or a mole of atoms, some number of moles. And bond energy, and what those things are in terms of microscopic energies. So atoms. In, a, in some material, if you have Avogadro's number of them, then all the atoms can have kinetic energy. And any of the atoms, and generally every pair of atoms has some potential energy. They have some interaction energy. And now that you've talked about both of those kinds of things and the connections between them, we can now I think uh, be really careful in making sense of what thermal energy is in terms of these microscopic energies and what bond energy is in terms of those microscopic energies. So when I say these are the same thing, I mean this group of energies is the same as that group of energies. And how they're the same is what we're going to start talking about today. You, you probably have ideas already on on things that are related, like higher temperature means higher thermal energy, higher temperature also means atoms moving around faster. So you probably already know that thermal energy has some relation to kinetic energy. We'll have a, a, a real specific relation and an algebraic, uh, a, a quantitative, an, an explanation that's, um, that's quantitative so that you can actually calculate things rather than just a vague atoms move faster if the temperature is higher we'll have a really specific measurement of, of how they move and why and along the road there we will find out that thermal energies also include some potential energy and you'll see I think today why that has to be Thermal energy is not just kinetic energy, but it includes potential energy changes also. And, and you'll also, I, I, you probably also have this idea in your mind that, that if there's a chemical bond represented by this kind of interaction, then that must be related to bond energies. And so we'll try to specify that also. Uh, this this slide gives you a, a, a quick picture of what we're going to try to talk about more today and next time and uh, you'll spend at least a couple of weeks in DL talking about. <coughs> this, this is supposed to be a box with five atoms in it and the, the atoms are all numbered here. And, and the atoms are moving, these are velocities, this atom is moving down and to the left, this one's moving down and to the right, this one's moving up and slightly to the right, this one's moving slowly, that one's moving fast. So, so these atoms are bouncing around, this is just a snapshot in time of, of what these atoms might be doing. Uh, they are relatively far from each other. If this is the size of an atom and that's the size of that atom, then, then they're really not close together. And so it's not, probably not surprising that this is kind of a picture of what a gas would be like, a gas of five atoms. Just to be specific about it, let me say that any two atoms interact with each other. If these are all neutral atoms, then you know that from, from chemistry, that any two atoms, if you bring them together, will attract each other. In fact, this general interaction potential energy that we've drawn for any two atoms, this is a, a generic kind of picture for two neutral atoms. As they get closer together, this R here is the distance between the two. Maybe they're two argon atoms. R is the distance between the two atoms. As they get closer together, they 
have a stronger and stronger force. When they're far apart, there's essentially no force between them, no interaction that we worry about. If there's no force, then the slope of the potential energy has to be zero out there, far away. So the slope of this is zero. As they get closer together, they start to attract each other. Attracting each other means the potential energy goes down as they get closer. Forces are always in the direction of decreasing potential energy. So the potential energy goes down as they get closer. That's what this picture is of. At some point the potential energy doesn't go any lower. In fact, if you get them, if they get too close together, the potential energy starts to go back up again. And so that's when they're repelling each other when, when the when they can lower their potential energy, their interaction potential energy by going farther apart, then that means they're pushing each other farther apart. So these atoms here are all moving, so they all have kinetic energy. So part of the thermal energy is that kinetic energy. Is there any potential energy that we have to worry about? Well, all of these atoms interact with each other. This potential energy turns out to be important. I don't want to circle that really. really want, I want to identify values of R for which that's important. And let me just pick that right there and say potential energy is important for values of R that are small. <coughs> if the things are close together, potential energy is important. With this being around the, the point at which they touch. So are potential energy is important here? Are they close to touching? Where are they on this graph? Are they over here somewhere? Or are they over here somewhere on average? All of them are over here. They're all far apart. None of them are close to touching each other. What's the potential energy approximately when atoms are all this far apart? Uh, close to zero. This is a kind of standard picture we have in our minds of, of an ideal gas, a, a monatomic ideal gas. The only energies that count are kinetic energies. Potential energies, interaction energies, not so important. Negligible, in fact. What about a diatomic ideal gas? This molecule is moving this way, this one's moving like that, this one's moving like that. Are potential energies ignorable for a diatomic ideal gas? And, and no, because some of them are stuck together. Some of them are close. So at that point, we're going to start, for a diatomic ideal gas, we are going to have to think about chemical bonds. And, and our thermal energy is, is going to include potential energies whenever there are bonds, it turns out. I'll say that now and we'll get a better picture of it later. Just generally, you probably already think of, of thermal energy, since it depends on temperature, as being very small when the temperature is very small. So if I said that the temperature was zero and told you that the thermal energy was negligible at that point, I hope that you'd be okay with that. Thermal energy depends on temperature. If I, so if I can go down to absolute zero, this is Kelvin by the way. If I can go down to absolute zero, then I'm not going to have any significant thermal energy. And so the whole energy that I have, the total internal energy, is just going to be bond energy. So this is almost uh, a, a definition. It's probably not hard to, for you to see that the total energy is only bond energy if you've gotten rid of all the thermal energy. So at t equals zero, all you have is bond energy. And so the question is, what is t equals zero? What does that look like? So I'll show you some simulations later, but just for two atoms, what does it mean to say t equals zero? 
Well, it, it, it means you have put this in contact with something that's really cold and every time you could you took energy out. So these things are running around, they interact with this kind of potential energy. Every time they get close together so the potential energy goes down, well what happens when potential energy goes down? Well kinetic energy can go up. You've probably been graphing things like this. Suppose the total energy is here. Suppose this is E total. These things are far apart to start with. The potential energy is small. So all they have is kinetic energy. So they're moving toward each other. What happens when they get closer and closer together? Potential energy goes down. So the kinetic energy is E total out here when the potential is zero. When they get closer and closer together, because I'll assume they're moving together, when they get closer and closer together, R is smaller here. So they're moving to the left here, R is smaller and smaller. They'll start to have a lower and lower potential energy as they come closer together. And lower and lower potential energy means higher and higher kinetic energy because that's the only energy they can have. If, if that's the case, they'll just go faster and faster. They'll go faster and faster. They will max out when the potential energy is a minimum. They'll come back together again and the kinetic energy will, will go to zero. They'll stop when the total energy is again equal to the potential energy. So right down there at that distance they'll stop. And, and then they'll come back apart again. They'll go faster and faster as they come back apart. And then they'll slow down as they get farther. But the kinetic energy, because it's a big total energy, the kinetic energy stays the same and they just is, stays high. And they just fly apart. How do you get two things to bond? You got to take energy out. If two uh, atoms form a bond, you got to take energy out of the bond energy system. What does that mean here? Well, when these two things are coming closer and closer together, kinetic energy is going up. So they were moving really fast. Suppose this is in contact with some really cold thing because I'm trying to cool it down. As they get closer and closer, they move really fast. If this is in contact with something cold, there will be some really slow moving atoms around. As these move really fast, they will hit the slow moving atoms. The slow moving atoms will speed up and these things will slow down. These things will give up that kinetic energy by running into something else. That kinetic energy will go away if it's an open system. What I've drawn here is essentially for a closed system of two atoms. But I don't want a closed system if I want to cool them off. I want to put it in contact with something else. And what happens when they're moving fast is they run into something. They lose kinetic energy to whatever, they're, to whatever the cold stuff is that they're in contact with. And so eventually if I cool it all the way down to zero and I take away all the kinetic energy, so I lower the total energy as far as I can, the lowest total energy, E total minimum, the smallest the total energy can be is the minimum potential energy. That's when these two are right at their bond distance. They're not too close, they're not too far, and they're not moving. I've taken away all the kinetic energy that I got when they were getting sucked together. I take away all that kinetic energy by putting them in contact with something cold and eventually they end up just stuck together and sitting there not moving. If I wanted to break them apart so they're down here, the potential energy is small and it's at a minimum and it's equal to the total energy. If I wanted to break those two apart, I would have to put in this much energy again to break them apart. That's what this graph tells you about two things. That goes back to what you knew before. If, I, if, you, have to, if you want to form bonds, you have to take energy out. This is just a microscopic picture of that. 
when I, so that's the description here, when I take all the energy out, all I have left is bond energy. These two things, if, there are only, if I only care about these two, they're sitting at that low energy, the bond energy is that much below zero. If I have two more th of these things over here, then I have two of those, so it's twice that below zero the bond energy, below zero energy. So if this is negative, if this minimum is at negative five and I have one pair of atoms, then the total bond energy is negative five. If I have two pairs of atoms bonded together, separate from each other, but bonded, if I have this pair and this pair, and this is, these are both negative five, then the total bond energy would be negative ten. I just have to add up all of these bonds energies to find the total bond energy. That's all this thing says. E bond is the total energy left at T equals zero. If I add energy, then I'm adding thermal energy. I'm taking, I'm making this thing shake around a little bit. Question? All right, so I, I probably don't need to say anything else about this since I think I just said everything. Um, Except I should probably tell you, I've thrown in this symbol U. I, I'm guessing you've seen it before in chemistry or something. As total internal energy, I put it in because we're going to use that in, in uh, about three weeks. So I thought I would put in symbol U is just our symbol for total internal energy. It just means add up all the energies that are internal to the system. Add up the bond energy, the thermal energy, for our purposes, that's all we're going to worry about. But there could be atomic energy or nuclear energies also in that internal energy. So U, this letter U, the internal energy, is the sum of the bond energy and the thermal energy. I could say it's the total energy of a system of if I only have two particles, then it's the total energy of those two particles. If I have a Godrose number, then it's the total internal energy of all of those. That's going to start becoming hard to add up. But for two particles, that's what this picture is generally for. And so that would just be the total energy. The bond energy is then the energy at, at the lowest equilibrium when you take all the thermal energy away. Where are the two atoms? Well, they're sitting at uh, one point, I don't know, 1.65 or I'm not sure what this number is right here. <laughs> but between one and two angstroms somewhere, or maybe 1.6 angstroms. They're sitting 1.6 angstroms apart and at this low energy after you've taken all the thermal energy away and they're not moving. If you put this in contact with something that's hotter, so you transfer energy to it, so they start bouncing around, then you have raised this energy up from there, up to there, and the amount that you've added is thermal energy because they're just bouncing around and you haven't broken a bond yet. So that's the basic picture uh, of, of two atoms and it's put in a language of many atoms. So bond energy is the, is the minimum potential energy and thermal energy is whatever energy you added above that minimum potential energy. <laughs>